Southern California is one of the most biodiverse places on the planet. Today, we're going to learn how elevation is a major cause behind that. I encourage you to look at the following pictures before we begin our adventure. You guys might have seen the story right before this was a picture of all the different vegetation zones that we have here just in this view shed where I am right now. And I'm at the Bernasconi Pass um, at the far end of the park. And I think right now is a great time to reflect upon all the really amazing climactic zones um, in a sense or ha vegetation habitats is really more proper um, that we have here in Southern California. So while we're at home, let's reflect a little bit on how lucky we are to live in a place with so much diversity and so much um, different, so many different ecosystems within a very small area. So just where I am right now, we're starting out right here in kind of a San Jacinto Valley, a coastal sage scrub area, much like this, right? It's most much uh, riverside and sage scrub, small bushes. Then you see in the mountains behind me, the first level we have is a chaparral. That's gonna be evergreen plants that typically hold their leaves throughout the summer. That's gonna go all the way up to 5,000 feet. After that, we have the montane coniferous forests. And so that's gonna stretch all the way to 8,000 feet. And that's gonna be like Big Bear, Idlewild, those places, kind of that pine tree look. Above that, we hit the snow line, which is right there around, I'd say about 8,200 feet on the south side here. The, and uh, that's the southwest side, about 8,200 feet. That's going to be the subalpine area. So you're going to get more sparse trees, some meadows up there, and then all the way at the summit, 10,800 feet high, over two miles in the air, is Mount San Jacinto, one of the steepest mountains in North America, which literally plunges from 10,800 feet all the way down to Palm Springs at around sea level in less than five miles. Now, even from here at this distance, from 1,500 feet all the way to 10,800, it's a dramatic climb, and that makes it one of the most prominent mountains in the United States. So I think it's fair to ask, why do we have so much variation in Southern California compared to other places of the world? And there's a couple of reasons for that, but the most obvious one is the differences in elevation that we have here in Southern California. So we obviously have the ocean, which is sea level, all the way up to 11,000 feet and everything in between. Okay, so the way the earth heats is by oxygen being heated by re-radiated sunlight from the surface of the earth. Okay, as you get higher in elevation, the air becomes less dense and less oxygen is able to stay in those parts of the atmosphere and they re-radiate less heat. And so what we need to know next is that when it's cooler temperatures, air holds water worse in cooler temperatures than in warmer temperatures. So what does that mean? Well, if you have a lot of water or any water in the air, it's more likely it's going to not stay in the air. It's going to fall to the ground as rain or as snow. And then we're going to get increased precipitation and water on the ground. And obviously there are other factors as well that play into this hot spot of biodiversity that we are, such as our unique Mediterranean climate um, that's already very diverse in and of itself and rare, and also our geography of our hills, the aspects of our slopes, but essentially it comes down to elevation. We hope you enjoyed this installment of Lake Paris Adventures, where we learned how elevation is one of the main causes of the great amount of biodiversity in Southern California. Please remember to follow us on social media and share this with your friends and family.